Okay, in Calculus BC, we're in section 4.5. You can see our learning target using calculus to graph functions. Now, here's the irony. Last year in accelerated math analysis, you dealt with a lot of rational functions. In fact, if you have friends who are in AMA right now as we speak, they would quickly tell you that just last chapter, that's what they did. By the way, they did it without calculus just as you did. So I do want to point out that a lot of what you can see here, at least when you see rational functions, you can still accomplish without calc. We're still going to use it though, and I hope you're going to see why. Uh, look, what you did before, undoubtedly, just doing some nice review, is factor everywhere, right? A good adage that you will hear is factor first. So, hey, what can we factor out of the top? What can I pull out there? We, a 3x, and you could say, well, here's x minus 2. And down below, we could factor that, and that would factor into, what do you think? Would you agree it's x minus 4 and x plus 3? You know, we need to multiply to a negative 12 simultaneously, add to negative 1. The only way you'd do that would be with negative 4 and, and a 3. Now, you might remember in AMA, you were asked to do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you were asked probably to name the domain. In fact, I know that because I'm teaching AMA this year, and that's what we were doing all the time. We were saying, hey, find your vertical asymptotes. Find your horizontal asymptote. Oblique asymptote, possibly. You remember, it's either a horizontal asymptote or an oblique asymptote. Uh, state a hole, if there is any. Uh, find an x-intercept. Find a y-intercept. And, uh, you know, first of all, for domain, what do you think we have for domain, guys? X cannot equal... Four. Yeah. Correct. Four or negative three. Very good. Look at those denominators. You're not allowed to divide by zero. Are, are we okay with that? Now, you might remember way back in AMA, uh, you'd also then be able to name your vertical asymptotes, which are lines, by the way. They are <coughs> equations of lines that we have to find. So, yes, very good. X equals, X equals 4. X equals negative 3. So very often when kids get this wrong, they'll say, well, it's 4 and negative 3. No, that's not the equation of a vertical line. That's just a number. We want equations of lines. The little mnemonic to help us out is Bucks and Hoy. You know, vertical lines always have x equals a number, and it has undefined slope. Horizontal lines have zero slope, and it's always y equals a number, right? Well, horizontal asymptotes, kids might say, my gosh, that seems like we were just doing that this chapter, my word. Is that where we could take a limit? Yeah. Let's do some end behavior. What's controlling the top? 3x squared. What's controlling the bottom? And what's that? That's just simply a 3. So, ooh, should I write a 3? Nope. y equals 3. By the way, if you've got a horizontal asymptote, you do not have an oblique asymptote. It's one or the other. The next example, we will talk about the oblique asymptote. Well, uh, are there any holes here? No. And kids might say, help me out, Mr. Dobner. I'm, I'm forgetting that. You'd have to cancel something out. Now, look, hypothetically, if that were to happen, let's just say that you'd have like x plus 1 all over x minus 5, you know, just to make some different numbers here. And then you had x plus 1, and down here you had x minus 4. If you were to cancel that out, you'd have a hole at negative 1, it's where you would have canceled those factors out. I love what a, a teacher I used to work with used to say. It's like a, you can envision, hey, if you're canceling that out of the equation, you're canceling, you're removing something from the graph as well. That, that, yeah, that's where the hole's coming from. But the bigger question is, okay, so I know my x-coordinate. Where's the y? Well, that's where you look at your reduced equation the simplified one, and you could plug a negative 1 in there. You'd get negative 6 all over negative 5. Well, a negative 6 over a negative 5, my goodness, it would have been that. Now, in this problem, that's not even pertinent. 
but I wanted to review that with you just in case a hole ever does show up, right? So that, that's review. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we'd say none, no canceling. Don't have to worry about that. X-intercept, well, wow. Uh, X-intercepts occur where the numerator equals zero because that's when Y will equal zero, right? You might remember doing that. I've got two X-intercepts, what are they? Zero and two. Now the Y-intercept, real quickly, you'd say, well, wow, let me guess, do I let X equal zero? You bet, even look at that original function and that whole fraction is going to become zero. And guys, if you think about it, if X is equal to zero and that's where you're crossing the X axis, that forces your Y value to be zero too, doesn't it? Well, my word, right now you look at this and you can say, wow, I've got a lot of information. You talk to your friends in AMA and they'd say, I'm good to graph. I can start putting it together. And you certainly could. Uh, but you might notice our learning target was I could use calculus to help us out. Yes? The y-intercept, you'd have to let x equal 0. And what's going to happen? You'd get your y to be 3 times 0 squared minus 6 times 0 all over 0 minus 0 minus 12. That just collapses to a 0, right? Yes? Why don't we plug in the 2 for the x-intercept? Yeah, it, well, you could right here. Look at this simpler equation right here. Numerator becomes 0. The whole fraction becomes 0 then. Right? If there's a 0 up on top, right, up in here, everything else might not be a 0, but that 0 in the, the numerator multiplies to a 0 all together in the top. Divide, and you get a 0. Okay? But listen... It's one thing to have all this information. It's good to have all this information for sure. I'm going to do some calc. I'm going to go ahead and take a derivative. Now this can beg the question. So very often kids can think about this and say, wait just a minute, last year I was fine without calculus. I mean, I graphed this out A-OK -okay and I remember I did a whole bunch. I know. Let's go ahead though and see would you agree we're going to need the quotient rule here? Low, d high, minus high, d low, all over low squared. So let's do that. I'm going to take my low, that's x squared minus x minus 12. Derivative of the top. What's the derivative of 3x squared minus 6x? 6x minus 6. And then we can say minus, well, my u is going to be 3x squared minus 6x. And then what about u prime, the derivative of that denominator? What's that? 2x minus 1. And down below, we'll have our low squared. Let me be the first one to say this is probably not the prettiest looking derivative that we'd like to see. All the same, let's go ahead and see where we're going. We're going to have to do some foiling, and that's okay. Ooh, could we factor out a 6 from the front? Yeah, but you know, look at this other part right here. We couldn't factor out a 6 from the other section. So we might as well just plow through it. Yeah, we could pull a 6 out in front and then multiply it, but look, let's just go ahead and go 6x times x squared. We'll get 6x cubed. 6x times a negative x, we'll get minus 6x squared. 6x minus 12, we'd get minus 72x. Now I'm going to distribute this negative 6 here. We'll get negative 6x squared. We'll get a plus 6x. And then negative 6 times negative 12 is a plus 72. Now, there's still more to this story, isn't there? Oh, my goodness. Uh, tell you what, let's actually foil this out. 3x squared times 2x is going to get you a 6x cubed. 3x squared times a minus 1 is a minus 3x squared. And a negative 6x times a 2x is a minus 12x squared. And a negative 6x times a negative 1 is a plus 6. 
keep in mind, guys, that that's all being subtracted. And if you wanted to distribute that negative, then all those signs would change. Now, at first glance, this problem looks really, really bad. But the big, big, big question is, might we be able to simplify that top? I hope you can see we can. Does anything cancel, do you think? Look at that. The 6x cubed and this minus 6x cubed are gone. Right? Yes. Oh, yes, it is. Thank you so much. Thank you for catching that. That should be a 6x, so that means we're going to have a minus 6x over there. Wow, you saved the day, Anami. Thank you so much. Very good. What else is going to cancel out? Look, look at this. A 12x squared and a minus 6x squared and a minus 6x squared. Do you see how all those are going to cancel out? You see that? And, and Anami just saved the day. She's saying, look, here's the plus 6x right here. I've got a minus 6x over there. Oh, wow, so things are cleaning up in a hurry. They're still not ideal. You look at this, you think, my word, I still have a mess here. Yeah, we do. But it's a better mess at the very least. You can say, what's left here? We've got a 3x squared, right? And then I'm going to have a minus 72x. And then we'd say plus 72 right here. And then down below, we've got x squared minus x minus 12 squared. Wow. So you might wonder what the value is in getting to this derivative. Okay? Here's what we're going to do next. I'm interested where the top could be zero. Where the top could be zero. Now, granted, I could factor out a 3. We'll have minus 24x plus 24. Okay, picking back up here, if you were to solve via the calculator with the quadratic program, you could see even without factoring out, you know, the x squared minus 24x plus 24 sadly does not factor but you could see that we've got two answers. It looks like 22.954. Wow, that might be a surprise. Then over here is a 1.045. So that's just using your quadratic formula. By the way, down below, we already would have seen critical numbers at a uh, you know, the 3 and the 4 when we factored that earlier. That was your denominator. It's still that same denominator. You could say x equals 3 and x would equal, or negative 3, pardon me, and 4. That's where you'd get some critical numbers. Now, you might wonder where these critical numbers would even come into play. Look, I'm going to forgo a number line check just for a moment just for a little moment, just to show you something. My point is, I don't think too many people would be in AMA if we were to talk to them and say, hey, let's check what's going around 23 right now, like 22.95, whatever. Uh, do you see what I'm getting at? It looks like there's some hidden behavior, behavior that our calculator very well could miss. So look, I guess what I'm really getting at is, even if we were graphing this thing, and if we were graphing it over here, we could say, hey, it sure looks like we're going to have a vertical asymptote at 4. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4. Sure looks like we're going to have a vertical asymptote at negative 3. Looks like we'd have a horizontal asymptote at 3. And usually at this point, kids will say, well, I've got an x-intercept of 0. I've got an x-intercept at 2. I've got my y-intercept right there. And before too long, kids will have a pretty good guess, seeing these two points, that your function very well is going to come up and then 
come back down probably.